Hey viewers, Ronnie Dale, Four Wheeling Australia. Welcome to the WA coastline. We are just south of a place called Kalbarri, about 600 kilometres from Perth. We want to show you guys what Western Australian coastline has to offer in regards to beach fishing, camping, and just some cool, fun four wheel driving. So stay tuned, and we'll take you from the north to the south. Sand dunes up, mate. Couple of caves. Look around that cove over there. Pretty good view down there. You see that look, from there? Yeah, look at much. I just want to chuck a line in. Yeah, can't wait. Mull away. Waiting for us. Oh, here we go. It's a pretty good spot here as well. Fancy me new year. Had to get special permission to access the track here. There's a bollard up ahead. Well, we just passed one saying authorised vehicles only. There is phone reception there. Now you do have to call the ranger to get in here and um, convince him that you're not a person that's going to drive onto the private property tracks. So we are passing private properties, so we have to remain as close to the beach as possible. There's one sand dune formation coming up, we can go over that, but beyond that, we must be close to the beach because those sand dunes are private property to a uh, quad bike tour company here. They spot you there, they're not going to be too happy with you. The current mission, which isn't an easy one. First we've got to find the sand dunes, then we have to navigate our way through the sand dunes, staying as close as we can to the coast so we don't end up in private property, and then of course, manage somehow to get down to the beach. Let's go. Left turn it is. These, um, these trips never start the way you expect them to start there's always twists and turns and you can't go here you can't go there clapping at the gate call me reverse right i follow through I can see wheel tracks up ahead, so we got something to follow now, which is pretty awesome. Roger. Makes it a lot easier. It's getting pretty late in the Arvo. As much fun as it is to sort of negotiate way through dunes, um, being 4.44 in the afternoon, it's good to uh, 
make our way to camp safely, especially towing a trailer. Right there. We followed the wheel tracks, but they ended up in a dead end. Green, it looks like a track or not? Oh, I'm not looking too... Yep, kind of. Sort of somewhere. No, I don't think so. You sure? I'm it not looks, convinced. It looks... Yeah, but then where maybe, are we going from here? Maybe to the left. Right. Over there. Yeah. Be... Stick with the dunes. Are we going to go past this, this cliff? So we're kind of lucky that we jumped out and had a bit of a look around here because I turned around and had a look under my vehicle and one of the uh, nuts has come off one of the bolts that holds the front control arms, the front radius arms so we're going to have to tap that in and then work out a way to keep it in there now Hopefully I've got a spare bolt somewhere, or nut, sorry, spare nut This is the uh, bolt I was talking about, holding the radius arm Had that come out, things would have gone real interesting I'm just super lucky to have a look, really lucky. So that's been working its way out for a while, I guess. Or well, maybe not actually, because it's quite, it's not rusty. M14. We're going to have to lift it up. Take some load off of it. Maybe, are these the same yeah, size? Yeah, no, that'll be Imperial, I was already looking at it before. Okay, I was thinking something else, give a pinch. Something off the 200? <laughs> no, unbreakable. Well, then we can pinch something off it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you got? Pandora's box. The metric? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. This, this should be metric. Yeah. It's a bit small, though, eh? Yeah. searching for bolts all we could find when wheel nuts they seem to be about the same size it just wasn't going on so we resulted in some cleaning of the bolt and some more cleaning and a bit more cleaning and then the files came out we got the toys <laughs> and Travis now trying to restore the thread with the thread restored, we realised the wheel nuts were actually a size too small, so they would never go on anyway. So time to make our own nut. I've seen Ronnie's tie wire, it's usually pretty good. Alright, so what I'm doing here is trying to make up a nut. And you're probably wondering why we're looking at this one now. We took this one off and put it on the front because we believe the front is slightly more important than the back one. <laughs> And uh, there we go. So we'll just have to keep stopping and checking this. So I've wrapped the wire around a couple of times, twitched it up, so it's kind of making its own bolt. And then we've, oh, well, I've twitched it around here to try and hold it back. So we'll keep checking and we'll see how we go. We may have to redo this a couple of times, but hey, if it works, it's going to get us out of here or get us into here. We're still trying to find our way to the beach. I don't record that bit. up. <laughs> what happens in the bush doesn't stay in the bush. Not on this channel. Drop them like they're hot. What's a traction control? Are you in low range? What are you in low range? I am in low range. Oh. 
Send a div scene. Oh, yeah, are we all tracks just like that? Here we are again, adventures with Ronnie, and uh, he's broken the car again. No trip goes without Ronnie breaking that car. <laughs> um, looks like front radius arm bolts worked itself loose, nuts dropped off, so we've swapped it over, put the front one in. Hopefully that'll hold in till later. We'll come up with a bit of a plan and um, see what happens, keep an eye on things. Just in case you're wondering, yes, all those wheel tracks are our wheel tracks. We are really struggling to find our way through this section. tracks in front of us. I think we'll get to camp before that thing goes down. Maybe. Maybe not. At least we get out of the dunes. Because it has been easy. I would not want to be doing this in the dark because at least in the daytime you can stand up high, get elevation and you can see what's around. In the dark you've got to put your nose in, see if there's anything there, come back out. But we have tracks now. Something I'm going to show you a bit later today, or tomorrow. I've got some special panels on the vehicle which I'm testing out for Rhino Hide. Um, they are magnetic, well they got magnets on them. Plastic mould bits of panel that sit on top of your actual door panels and prevent you from scratches. It sounds a bit funny when you drive past these bushes. You don't get that screechy metal noise like I'm used to. Um, and let's be honest, my car is that scratched and dented. There's probably no point in me actually having these by now. But I'm looking at getting a paint job later on. That's beside the point. Um, but I'm just testing these to make sure that they stay on the car and they do the job. Um, Trav behind me, he's actually got a set for the 200 as well. And with his set, you can't even tell they're on. We're just slightly excited, actually we're very excited. One, we found a beach. Two, we stayed off the private property, as we were told to do, and as, as we should do. Three, we found an interesting climb down the scarp. Looking forward to this. Down there you can see quad bike tracks. That'll be from the local tour company that's around here somewhere. A whole heap of them there. That's the beach. There's a lookout up that way. Uh, Anthony's been here a couple of times before. So he's saying it's well worth going up the lookout to check it out. And then we can see the whole beach from up there. I reckon for now we'll hop in the cars and take on this track. It's pretty narrow here too.
So bluff points, a lookout that I'd been to uh, a lot previously and uh, wanted to take the boys up there for a good look. Um, even that in itself is a, a big, big hill to conquer, um, especially with a trailer and that narrow turning around point at the top. I've seen people go off the edge of that before. We are done and dusted at Bluff Point. We have soaked up the views, the sun's going down, so it's time to hit the beach and make our way to camp. how today's kind of worked out in the end I mean we're still not a camp but it's been a pretty good day so far um, so now yeah Anthony reckons we can't get lost so Anthony's got a lot of experience up and down this this beach here uh, on quad bikes and now he's got a dune buggy and whatnot and uh, pretty much just follow the beach the whole way and then we'll get to this pretty cool camp location uh, you have to wait till tomorrow morning to see it because it's going to be dark by the time we get there, but uh, it's pretty epic. Better get moving. Having fun, mate? Yeah, awesome. 200 on the beach. Loves the sand. Loving it. The autos that go for the beach work. Don't know about the hill descents, but definitely in the sand. Makes life very easy. Yeah, she's been taking it very well. Um, how many other tyres? What, I think 18 pounds? Yeah, 18 all around we did in the end. So, haven't got stuck. Oh, anyone hasn't got stuck yet, actually. No, no one's needed the pool. Been crawling out. Pretty good. Auto life. They Loving say it. auto's no good, but I don't know, it's pretty easy going on the beach. Yes, I'm going to agree with you there. Auto's all the way for me. 
see where we get to. More time for, the, more time for snacks and drinks. <laughs> Alright Ronnie, rate the day from 1 to 10. First day. Oh, it's up there. It's up there. It's thrown a lot at us. I don't like easy trips. Um, eight. Eight. Did you expect to climb down a cliff face? No. No, I did not. No. That, that, that was one of the highlights and then getting to the top afterwards. Definitely. What are you expecting to find at this camp? Uh, I know this camp, so we'll be retreating behind the dunes because we have a southerly wind. Thankfully, it's not a southwesterly wind, so the dunes that we're going to hide behind are perfect for southerly winds. And um, then we got like the perfect sort of beach right there. So we're looking forward to camp. And it doesn't matter because it's dark because I know where it is. So that's the benefit of knowing where you're going. I haven't done this stretch here before though. This stretch here is pretty um, surprising. How there's rocks everywhere. Um, yeah, yeah. You gotta keep on your, keeps you on your toes. Seen Ronnie taking a bit of a different line, so it wasn't the high line or the low line, it was sort of a, a middle-ish line, and there was the tiniest hump in the beach you could see, even from where we were. And um, yeah, obviously just stopped a little bit early, uh, and yeah, the recovery started from there. I did a rookie mistake, I tapped the brake. I've got a trailer with a brake controller. I forgot to turn a brake controller to zero, and you shouldn't tap your brakes on, on sand anyway. So I've created three humps, sank down, Try to, try to drive out of it. So now I'm taking a bit more out. I reckon I'm probably gonna have to use just a wobber, a winching from Trav or a snatch strap. Or maybe even just max tracks. So we're just deciding that now. We're about probably 10 k's from camp. So um, we'll get to it so we can get there. So I got severely bogged. You have to remember that bloody trailer all the time because if that brake controller's turn on just it goes from one to ten. If it's just on two or one, it locks up in the sand. And then I watched the 200 go down briefly, and I thought, nah, there's no way I'm getting out of this easy. Yep, got the tracks out. These haven't been used yet either. These are new ones. That's just typical my style. Get to camp in the dark, use recovery gear in the dark. Cheers, Dom. It's actually good, we get to try them out. Yeah. Yeah, so I got bogged on purpose, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> First of night, fell off on purpose. You gotta no, back me up. on purpose. Yeah. You gotta back me up on that being a patrol yeah, yeah. driver? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're very kind. <laughs> Shovels are way better, but in my hand, I'd have to get the shovel down. The problem is, I'm going to have to drive a bit of a ways forward and then come back on foot to grab them. I need to get up on higher ground. It's just surprising how soft this sand is, you know. It's, it's even gotten cooler, so usually when it's a lot warmer, the sand's a lot worse. It's less, less dense. Treacherous. I've got the matches. I've got the 
down here on the street. One of the most interesting things that we learned from that knife, or we probably knew already, was that you should be using straps with max tracks when you're on the beach, or even in muddy situations. They are so easy to lose. Uh, we spent probably, I, I don't know how much time, we could have saved a lot of time if we, if we actually had straps on them because we could locate them easier. Um, Anthony and I were finding them by standing on them, which isn't always the best thing with bare feet. So yeah, trap use the straps. A look underneath the vehicle, lo oh, and behold, there it is, which means that I've moved bugger all. All right, well, let's keep it on these now, eh? You got the ropes? The straps? No, nah, but if you, keep, if you want one on either side, yeah, then you can em. grab them from under. Because what I'll do is pop up, as soon as I feel like I'm sinking, Stop. chuck them back in. Yep. This side, that front right, you sit, it's twisted. So don't move too far, but it's more this side. I feel I have to drive down towards the water, towards the water right? No. Alright, I reckon put them on the front so we direct the wheels down towards the shoreline. What's up? Drag the wheels up? No, I want to drive down to the water. have too many noodles. I was like, this is a one o'clock to camp deal. Like, this is the next morning. Like, that's not unusual. Did you really think we're gonna get into camp early? No, nah, what are we? Uh, 10 minutes to nine. It's still early actually, in Ronnie's, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not midnight. No, we're stuck for a bit. I think we might be winching, maybe. <laughs> one more go. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we don't wanna get there early. No, of course not. So I try to go down to the shoreline because it, usually it's harder, it just got worse and everyone was questioning what I was doing. Now we're getting serious. Yeah, you're bloody softer. My theory of going closer to the shoreline has backfired. This water's getting a bit close to the car. Hey Trav, you want to move your car forward? Tensioning up. All right, let's see if we can handle my heavy ass winching in and driving. Do you want me to move up a bit more when you're slacking it off? Uh, I'm going to put some traction first. Uh, you can unhook and then move up and I'll get a couple of 
Yeah, copy. The car's out of the water. The trailer's in there now. <laughs> Up, I think. I'm not going to stop again. <laughs> Yay! Finally out. I was thinking for a bit there, like, what's wrong? Like, I drove this whole beach this far and it was just that one patch there. Travis went down, he got out. I went down with a trailer. Not happening. Max tracks. Yeah, feel alright where you are when you stopped or you dropped a bit? No, nah, I'm on uh, terra firma, mate. I'm, I'm on top. Does anyone want to teach him about staying on the high line? <laughs> Especially at night on the beach. <laughs> that was almost camping there. As I break it, then I got nothing. It's all fun and games now, boys. Just get the max, <laughs> max tracks on the bonnet, quick release. Yeah. We've still got a camp, it's harder to bring over, it's all good. They were pretty quick to get on. Can you check the handbrake and everything? It's all good. Yeah, yeah. That would have been a perfect time to launch the boat if you had it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're probably wondering what would I do if I was here on my own and I got stuck like that. The first thing I'd do is unhook the trailer, and get the car, the, the Land Cruiser up on higher ground, spin around, winch the trailer up slowly. Uh, there would be no use in me trying to get out with the trailer on my own. It would be too hard work, the tide would have got me by the time I get out. So, if you're ever in a situation on your own and you're towing, winch the trailer, get the car out, turn around, winch the trailer up, if you have a winch, that is. Down to 10 PSI on the front, down about 12 on the rear. That's far too low. That's all good fun, we got the max tracks back. Um, you get to camp in the dark. I don't know what just changed, eh? Yeah, 929, camp in the dark. Kitchen open. Very easy dinner tonight. We are boiling to, well, a kettle and a billy. Let's go to the pantry. Ooh, first things first, got to keep the camera people happy. Thank you. Alright guys, you need to make a selection. Here we go. We're going real easy tonight. So we've got beef teriyaki, apricot chicken, um, beef and black bean sauce, tuna mornay, tuna mornay, Cauliflower and pea dal. That's yours. You got your name on it, mate. Yeah, that's your name. <laughs> Moroccan pork. Anything? I'll have Moroccan pork, please. Oh, Moroccan pork. Okay. You have the Moroccan pork? Oh, Thank you. I need Moroccan <laughs> pork. Oh, here you go. You're all the same? Moroccan pork. I'll go that. Or oh. beef teriyaki? Yeah. Or beef mango and mango curry chicken. That's what it looks like. Oh, I've got a 300ml measurement cup here. Okay. Yeah, the heat comes through the bag. <laughs> the heat comes through the bag. <laughs> 
awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. It's actually like beef, eh? Like, mm. it's chewy like beef? Yeah. How long did you sound? Long time. Oh, 10 minutes, but I only waited six. Yeah, What's in yours? 20 on that. Beef teriyaki. Nice. The Moroccan pork <clears throat> couscous with vegetables. Hey, if it was roast pork, we'll be eating in about two hours time. That's right. <laughs> I have a bit of a conclusion here. AJ, if you're watching, all the meals were smashingly good, apart from the uh, beef and black bean sauce. That was our least favourite. Even though the boys are being polite about it. Just wasn't on point. Yeah, they weren't honest. They really liked this one. You rated that, this that one the best? So that tastes the best. That was your favourite? Yeah, teriyaki. I haven't tried the, what's the chicken one like? That's pretty good. Yeah. What do you have, Don? I've never tried I had chicken pork. Can I try? Pork. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> stole, well, I'm, I'm stole. <laughs> dibs on the beef teriyaki. Mm. Actually, what haven't we tried? The tuna. The texture's like a chicken mango custard. Yeah, has it got pasta? pasta? I reckon it's got pasta yeah. in it, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's got pasta. When I open it up, I have pasta in it. Yeah, it's okay. nice though. I like that one. Mm. It's got a slight bit of spice. But for a... Your meal and flavour wise, I reckon yours... For a, me for a meal in a packet? Yeah. Seriously. And just add water. Yeah, and you're not waiting two hours for a pork roast. <laughs>